A friend of mine once told me that March is just such an epic month because it's the only month that's a verb, first of all, and it's the last month of Q1. So you, you're three months into the year and you're just kind of like, what have I done, really? Like, what have I done? <laughs> Hey everyone, it's me, Halise, endeavoring to persevere. As always, if you're new here, I make videos about my chaotic good life. Subscribe, follow, social media, all the things, you know. I think I can speak for us all when I say that. These bullet journal videos that people are coming out with are beautiful. What's her name? Mangoes and limes, lemon limes, pick up limes, pick up limes. I watched pick up limes's uh, bullet journal video and was just, my Virgo heart sang. It was just so beautiful. It was just a beautiful thing. But if I'm being completely honest, my bullet journal style is really, really straightforward. And it's just the bare bones of what I need to kind of, one, have a level of mental clarity and reflection, and also make sure that I'm being productive and can catalog that productivity um, and see it for myself because that's something that I really struggle with is I'll work on things and I'll get so caught up in the minutia that I don't actually realize that I'm getting things done. And it's really a combination of a traditional long form journal and a productivity bullet to-do list journal. I find that keeping it simple really does work best for me because once I kind of decide I'm gonna do something and form a habit, it, it's formed. So in like my mind's eye, you know what I'm saying? In my heart chakra, I have to just decide to do something because once I decide, then I will begin to just naturally form that habit because I've decided to do it. So with my bullet journal, I like to just keep it really simple and straightforward. And in this video, I'm just gonna kind of show you and see if you can pull any inspirations from it and so on and so forth. So I've already got my bullet journal done for this month and we're probably already halfway into March by the time I release this video. But I went ahead and found a blank journal so that way I could just sketch out March for you and show you how I put each section together. With March, this is the month page. So my two goals this year are around growing here on this YouTube channel. I would love to get to 100K subscribers. So if you're new here, subscribe, follow, show social media. And then I also want to maintain a certain level of physical fitness. I have learned that for me, mentally, physically, when I'm working out consistently about three days a week, I just, mentally I feel right, physically I feel right. It's just, it's just better all around. So those are my two big goals this year. And so my bullet journal, the month page kind of is an extension of that. So I usually write the, the month at the top of the page and then I write what my subscriber count is so that way I can see month to month how much I'm growing and see that the number is actually getting bigger. Again, you get so caught up in the minutia and the day to day that you just lose track of it. And so seeing how much you are at on February versus how much you are in March versus how much you are in April and seeing how much you grow in between each month, I think helps. And then I use the month page as essentially a dump box for ideas for videos for the month. I generally try to put out six to seven videos a month. And so I will just put those video ideas down. And you'll notice that some of them are videos that I didn't necessarily get to complete the previous month, but I really want to do them. So I have extended them into the next one. And as I finish filming a video, I'll put a check mark next to it. And then once I have executed and actually posted that video, I'll cross it off with an X. And so that way, by the time I'm ready to set up the next month, I can see what videos I've actually filmed, how many of them I've actually released, and see how much I stayed on schedule with my ideal six to seven videos a month. Uh, or how much I didn't maybe and can like justify why that didn't happen So I love just kind of having this sort of brain dump I will usually already have six ideas for videos at the beginning of each month But as I move through the month things will happen I'll have an interesting conversation with someone or something like that And I'll be like, oh, that'd be an interesting video idea And then I just write it into that month page So that way I just kind of have it there and can reference it later There have definitely been months where I literally 
came up with a video in the middle of the month, um, filmed it, edited it, shot it, all the stuff, and posted it. And it ended up just coming to the top of the queue. But again, I like doing this bullet journal style because it's functional, but allows for there to be just some uh, creativity and allows for there to just be sort of whimsy and just go where you want to go kind of thing. On the opposite side of the month page, that's where I put my goals for that month. Now there, I only usually put about three or four goals that I want to accomplish for the month. And I define a goal like this, something that will take more than two days to complete. And that's how it doesn't end up getting into my sort of minutia day-to-day to-do list um, because goals are basically multiple to-dos that will span a couple of days. So in this goals list, I think I have things like editing sans gluten episodes because as y'all may or may not know, I'm trying to launch a second channel that's all gluten-free cooking and baking. Check that out if you're interested. By the time this video comes up, the trailer should be up. That's kind of where I'm at this year because as y'all know I'm also sabbaticaling so one of my goals for my sabbatical was to launch sans gluten so I've been breaking it up month to month to get there then I have a continue to do section this isn't necessarily goals but this is where I like to put those habits that I've already formed that I really want to make sure I maintain again I won't necessarily feel bad if I miss a day or two of this habit this continue to do that I've put because the habit is pretty much formed for me, but I just wanna keep it top of mind of like, right, I need to work out three times a week because that really does help. And then I also have a consider section. And this is something again that if something kind of pops up throughout the month where I'm like, hmm, maybe that would be something to begin to incorporate or just kind of meditate on a little longer before I make a decision to do it or not. This kind of gives me that space to just think about it a little bit more and remember that it's on my mind sort of subconsciously and in the background. So I think for the demo version, I put consider starting to wake up at 6 a.m. every day so that way you have the morning to edit videos, which I'm probably going to officially incorporate next week because I do tend to edit a lot better in the morning and I get a lot done in the morning. So there you go. I put a sticky at the beginning of each month so that way I can easily reference the month page since again I do actually use it throughout the month in regards to putting out new video ideas, video idea brain dump, and also checking back in on what my monthly goals are, my consider doings, and also my continue to do's. My week setup. This is where it gets a little different from, I think, the traditional bullet journal style. I still use check marks, arrows, stars, and things like that, but I tend to think in terms of weeks and months. Um, for some reason, my mind just sort of naturally gravitates that day, that way, and I think, again, it's because in a week, you can see what you've done. It's been enough time. In a month, you can see what you've done or what you haven't done. Mondays, for some reason are days that I am really good about just figuring out what I'm trying to get done for a week. And so my Monday to-do list is quite long because it's everything I actually want to get done that week, um, not necessarily that day. So I'll put everything that I'm pretty sure I want to get done that week and then put stars by the things that I would like to get done that day. And then as I complete them, I put a check mark, um, and so on and so forth, and it's pretty simple. And then once I've constructed my to-do list, this is where it becomes more like a traditional journal. I switch colors and I use blue for all of my traditional journaling. And I try to journal a little bit every day. And it's not something that needs to be epic. Sometimes my journal entries just take up the rest of the page and that's it. Sometimes my journal entry is just a paragraph. Sometimes it's a sentence. Sometimes it's a couple pages because it was a rough day. But I love this because it allows me to have this sort of daily mental check-in because I'm learning as I'm on the sabbatical time, um, as I work for myself continually, um, the personal and the professional really are hand in hand and there's no way you can really separate the two. I've learned that what I'm going through and working through mentally, personally, can really affect my productivity on the business side of things. And so I love that I can see 
my productivity and then how I'm feeling about that productivity or not feeling about it. With the journal entries, I go as personal as I can, as I want to. Sometimes I don't do the journal entry until I'm going to bed and can truly reflect on the full day. Um, sometimes the journal entry is because I had an interesting conversation with someone at the office or um, a meeting I had. Maybe it's a few notes on that meeting of something I want to do. Again, the personal journal part is really just a way for me to reflect on the day, check in with myself, and be present with myself. And so the next day I just look at that list, see what I finished and what I didn't finish, and take everything I didn't finish and put that, and that becomes the to-do list for the next day. Sure, maybe I end up adding a few things because maybe something popped up from the day before, but for the most part, I usually don't have to. Um, it just ends up being that list, and ideally it's a shorter list. And then again, repeat throughout the day, kind of journaling how I'm feeling about things, what I feel, how I feel about how something got done, or maybe I got an interesting email and I wanna like write about that, whatever the thing is. And I like doing this because by the end of the week, your list should be pretty small. The reason why I really like this is because for me, again, I get so bogged down in the minutia of the day to day. There are days and weeks where I'll feel like, what did I even get done? Who am I right now? And so by journaling this way, starting off with a long to-do list and seeing how much it gets smaller by Friday, and then also reading through my journal entries, it's a, you'll be surprised how much you actually accomplish in a week. Um, and it's a really good way for me to be reflective and see like, yeah, Halise, it was a rough week, but you got things done. And that's what matters. You're out here, you're trying, you're getting things done. And that leads me to the next part of my bullet journal style, which is the week review. Um, I think I actually learned this from Nathaniel Drew's bullet journal video. I'll link to it down below and in the eye of Sauron if you wanna check that out. But um, I do a week review and that is just, a, again, a basic journaling style where I then, usually on Saturday, I'll go back and read all of my journal entries from that week and see if I can spot any themes, any trends, what's happening. On a personal note, I've noticed that with my hormone cycles and fluctuations. Like, yeah, I was really irritable that week and I really kind of snapped. I need to be more in tune with, you know, week three, I need to not be an ass. Or I'll notice a trend of like, oh man, I keep saying that uh, because I didn't start my day until 10 a.m., I ended up working till seven or eight and that didn't really give me much time to check in with Mr. Halise at the end of the day to see how his day was going and just kind of regroup and connect with him. Mm, maybe I really should start my day earlier. But then if I do that, I need to make sure that I'm not being me and ending up working 13 or 14 hours for the day. Like I need to figure out my hard stop time now. You know, just these little things, again, that how your personal life can really affect your productivity um, in your business, especially if you work for yourself. And then finally, I also do a monthly review. I go back and look at all the week reviews for that month, and again, how was I feeling? What did I accomplish? Am I happy with what I accomplished? I usually am. <laughs> or if there were outside forces that just kind of hindered me from doing something, then so be it. Um, a lot of times I'll see in my monthly reviews, wow, I persevered, that's great. So this ends up being a very positive and reinforcing bullet journal technique for me and I really enjoy it a lot. I also do feel like spiritually God is in the present when you can be mindful and present of yourself you can begin to hear God speaking to you through everything around you and that's why I really like reflecting because there's been so many times where I've seen things in my journal entry and it was just like oh God answered that prayer got it in the comments below, let me know what your bullet journal technique is, if anything in this was helpful, and then also share any other techniques you may have with everyone else. Um, if you're new here, again, thanks for stopping by and consider subscribing. A big shout out to my Patreon production team, patreon.com slash for continuing to be my production partners on this channel. If you're interested there, you get early access to videos as well as private weekly vlogs from me. So make sure and check it out. Again, patreon.com slash Halise. I'm Halise, and I'll see you when I see you. Bug, uh.
On the opposite side of the month page, that's where I put my goals. On the opposite side of the month page, that's where I put my goals for that month. 